Welcome back. So we're going to be looking at the latest big news out of the Daily Journal Corp, um, which is where Charlie Munger manages a small portfolio within the Daily Journal, and he sits on the board of directors with the Daily Journal. Um, and there's been some big news that's just come out, which was brought to my attention from another YouTuber called Investing with Frank. I highly recommend you go over and check out some of the videos that Frank's been doing. Um, great sort of value-based investing videos. And he brought to the attention just yesterday this big announcement made by Charlie Munger, and he has brought a position, quite a large position within the portfolio um, with Alibaba. So that's what we're going to be digging in today. Also look around the Daily Journal as well and look at um, the Manual of Ideas pitch by Matthew Peterson as well. So we'll finish up with that and just quickly have a quick look over the Daily Journal as well. So we're not going to be digging deep onto Alibaba or anything like that. Like I said, I'm not super familiar with the Daily Journal or Alibaba. This is just a brief sort of overlook on what's happened here with the latest announcement made by Charlie Munger. So let's dive straight into it. So this is Charlie Munger's portfolio within the Daily Journal Corp. It's a very concentrated portfolio. We can see here only five positions. Um, this is in the US. They do have a couple of positions outside of the US, which we'll touch on later. Um, but here we can see the latest position coming in at 19%, and that's Alibaba. So he bought 165,320 shares um, with a reported price of $226, uh, giving it a total value of just over $37 million there. So this is big news for Charlie Munger or anyone that follows this particular um, fund here is because nothing usually happens here. You know, you look at every 13F and literally that's all that's there. Um, so it's quite big news to have something happen and change within this portfolio. So that's what we're digging into today, um, looking at looking at it a little bit closer. But I'm going to be looking more at the Daily Journal because, it's, to be honest, it's not something I've really looked at too much before or even Alibaba for that um, matter. So just going to be briefly touching on a few different interesting things around Alibaba and also the Daily Journal. So if we look at data roma still i'm going to look at how many other super investors currently hold alibaba in their portfolio as well so we're just going to scroll down here and have a quick look who else is holding alibaba currently so we can see here at the top there's currently 11 other super investors that hold alibaba within their portfolio and we'll just scroll down and have a quick look who those other value investors are so here are the top 11 other investors that hold alibaba within their portfolio obviously big dog charlie munger coming in at the top and that's 19% so he has pretty good conviction you would think with holding that sort of amount within his portfolio Bear in mind it is still quite a small portfolio. It's only around 200 million, which is still huge for me and you but for Charlie Munger You know, it, it's probably still quite small amount um, But still definitely something to take note of and that's for sure So he holds like I said 19% um, There Greg Alexander coming in at just uh, shy of that 9% there with 600,000 shares with Alibaba Looking through the list here, I'm not super familiar with a few of these other um, super investors here. If there's anyone in this list that you're like, yeah, you got to follow him, definitely drop in the comments below, um, you know, the super investor that you're, you're sort of keen on. Tweety Brown, I do look at the Tweety Brown, um, but they have more of a, I think their portfolio has around 30 or 40 different positions in it, but they have a small position as well coming in at 26,000. So it's not a huge position in their portfolio. So let's just dive in and have a quick look if anyone's been sort of selling uh Data Roma. I mean, sorry, Alibaba. So let's just scroll down the list. So this is this is what I found interesting as well. So Li Lu, which is the only um, fund manager that what Charlie Munger has ever trusted anyone to invest his money, um, has actually been selling out his position. If we look back at Q2 2020, you can see that he was selling out of his position, um, sold out entirely of his Alibaba position in Q2 of 2020. So it's interesting that Li Lu, who was selling out of this fund, um, selling, sorry, selling out of Alibaba, where on the other hand, Charlie Munger is recently buying in. Um, so I'm not too sure, you know, if they've been discussing this in any great detail or if this is advice from um, Lee Lu in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's hard to know. If you know, if you have some inside information on that or you, you've written an article about it, drop it in the comments below because I'd love to know a bit more around that, whether this has come from Lee Lu or anything like that, because it's interesting that I see Lee Lu selling out of the position where on the other hand, like I said, Charlie Munger is buying in. We're just going to have a quick look over at the Manual of Ideas Daily Journal pitch, um, which I just watched this last night, actually. Manual of Ideas is a great website. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not a member of the website. Um, it's cost quite a lot. I think they're currently accepting members, but I can't remember offhand what the, um, the membership cost is, but it's quite expensive. But anyway, they've released this video for free, which you can go watch. I'll leave a link in the description below, which I highly recommend, especially if you're interested in the Daily Journal and just Charlie Munger and... Um, now it's recently this new Alibaba position that he's taken as well. Um, but anyway, this video here is by Matthew Peterson of Peterson Capital Management, where he pitched the Daily Journal as you know his top 
idea for the 2021 manual of ideas um, pitch, which is great. It's a great thing. It's 48 minutes, um, but it goes into detail around um, why he believes that Daily Journal was a good sort of business to invest in. Uh, we're going to be looking at a couple of the slides that he talked about here um, around the Daily Journal as well. But like I said, I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can go through and watch this. Let's just have a quick look at some of the slides here that he went through. I'm just going to touch on a few of the highlight points. There were some of my key takeaways. So you obviously know Daily Journal, we've got quite a good, um, very heavily stacked board of directors. Obviously with Munger there and a lot of these other guys have been on the board for a long time. I'm not familiar with a few of these guys, um, but they have a very stacked board. So back in 1977, uh, Munger and Gruen bought Daily Journal for $2 million US. Gives a quick brief history of what's been going on with Daily Journal. Um, and what's been happening there. So within the Daily Journal, they have a newspaper business, which is, he's pretty much pegging that at zero dollars, which is, seems to be a dying business. Then they have that investment portfolio, which we've been talking about. And then there's this Journal Technologies, which is, from my basic understanding, it's like a tech um, software company that rolls out, which there's good room for um, growth there. And Matthew Peterson's pegging it at 100 million in um, revenue, recurral revenues by 2030. We'll just touch on that later. But uh, let's just scroll down. So the investment portfolio there, which we're going to have a quick look at, and then the journal technologies as well. So let's just scroll. So this is the Daily Journal's portfolio. This is what Charlie Munger manages. Um, so here we have these four holdings within the US, and then also these two other positions, which he sold out of Hyundai. But uh, by the looks of things here, he still has this um, position with BYD as well, but it's hard to get information around this. Um, you know these two particular holdings that he holds outside of the US because he doesn't have to um, release this information on his 13F filing. Only companies that he holds within the US he has to release um, information about that. So I'm not too sure how Matthew Peterson come across this information or anything like that. But this is what I'm just looking at here today, um, and this is obviously before the Alibaba position as well. So just scrolling down, so that's basically what we're looking at there and then this is the journal technologies which is this is your expectations are for over 100 million in recurring annual revenue by um 2030 so this is a good area for growth within this journal technologies but like i said i haven't done a deep dive on this at all this is just basic had a quick look and watched the video last night on it by matthew peterson um but it's something i will probably look into a bit more if you'd like to know a bit more about this and you want to see future videos on this drop in the comments below and i'll do some follow-up videos around journal technologies or anything like that as well um, but like I said, I highly recommend you guys go over and check this out if you're interested in Daily Journal. Let's just have a quick look over the Daily Journal uh, over at Simply Wall Street here. So current market cap of 437 million. I'm just going to be scrolling through this guy super quick. Have a couple of look at a couple of key things that I picked up on it last night. Um, so PE ratio of just under nine there. So super cheap if you're comparing it price to earnings. Um, and earnings grew by 400% there. Um, so I'm not too sure about that, but we'll dig into this. Like I said, Simply Wall Street, you know, I've looked, said it a few times. It's a good place to sort of start when you're doing research, but you definitely want to dig deeper than Simply Wall Street and don't use their fair value calculator. Put a little, you know, take it into account, but don't put much stock into what they say with their fair value. I'm not too sure how they come to these fair values, but I'm finding um, Daily Journal is quite a hard one to sort of value. And you've got to dig a bit deeper, I feel, um, to try and get a really good understanding of Daily Journal. Not just looking at the numbers, it doesn't sort of stack up, but you've got to look at it a bit deeper than that. Valuation, so they're pegging the valuation coming in at uh, $317 there. Um, well, that's what it's currently marketed at, and then they're saying it's 52% overvalued. So that's what I was saying. With these calculators, you've got to put a, you know, don't put a lot of stock in what they say here. PE, like I mentioned earlier, um, they have quite a high PE ratio, which is good to see, coming in at... Um, 8.9, which is compared to the industry average of 23.4. Price to book, price to book is 2.2, so it's in line with industry. Future growth, so this is, you, you, they don't have anything on the future growth of the company around um, anything there. Price to earnings. A couple of key things I want to look at here. Obviously, balance sheet is bomber. Let's have a quick look at the balance sheet. So they've got 280 million. Um, of assets to to 25.28 in short term um, liabilities and then long term assets coming in at 23 million and then they still have a bit of long term debt they're coming in at 77 million in long term debt but very healthy balance sheet uh debt to equity is 
looking solid. Like I said, balance sheet's good. Dividend. They do not pay a dividend, um, which is good to see. <laughs> and a couple of other things I want to point out here, then we'll wrap that one up there for today. So if we look down here, the board members, obviously we have Charlie Munger coming in at um, independent chairman of the board. And he's been on the board for 44 years, so he's been in the game for a long time. And it just had, what a man to have on the board of directors. Um, and then we've got Gerald Salesman here as a vice chairman. And there's one thing here that I'm a bit uh, concerned about is, or not not so much concerned, but it's interesting to see um, the insider trading volume. So by the Gerald Salesman here, he's been selling off a lot of his shares um, by the end of last year there, like every every couple of weeks he was selling off shares by the looks of things here. And the top of the list here in 22nd of December, 2020, he sold off a fair amount coming in at uh, just shy of 3 million there of shares. So a little bit of uh, insider selling there, which is not good to see. Or what, Better if you see insiders buying, um, but there is high insider ownership within Daily Journal as well. So we looked at their individuals own, individual insiders own 23%, general public 35 and then institutions 40%. So that's the sort of breakdown of ownership breakdown of Daily Journal. And then we have the top shareholders within the company as well. So Rosman, Lagner, Wealth Management coming in at the top there, just shy 20%. BlackRock, good to see there. Um, Charles Munger, old Charlie boy coming in at 3.62 and then Vanguard down the bottom there. Anyway guys, we're going to wrap that one up there today. Um, hope you got some value from this. What are you guys' thoughts around this big um, position that Charlie Munger's made within the Daily Journal portfolio? Love to know your guys' thoughts on it. Drop them in the comments below. And if you found any other great information around this as well, also drop that in the comments below because it's something I am starting to look into a lot more as I do find it quite interesting. If you enjoyed today's video guys, it'd be much appreciated if you hit that like button. And if you want to see future videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. With that said guys, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers guys.